Father, I confess, cause I've been living wrong. Hello everyone and welcome back to another World of Tanks console video. My name is Zach, and today we'll be covering one of the brand new tier 8 premium heavy tanks. It is the German premium heavy tank, the King Tiger. And just a quick bit before we head off over into the comparison sheet, just something I, I ended up finding out about this. The Tiger II is a German heavy tank of the Second World War. The final official German designation was Panzer and Flagen Tiger aus B, often shortened to Tiger B. It is also known under the informal name of Koenig's Tiger, and I hope I pronounced that right. That is probably a 100% chance that I did mess it up, but I gave it a shot. The German name for the Bengal Tiger, often translated literally as Royal Tiger or somewhat incorrectly as King Tiger by Allied soldiers, especially by the American forces. So that is a quick jab there at the Americans uh, for, this, uh, for this little thing. But jumping over to the comparison sheet quickly, what you're going to notice right off the bat is that I decided to uh, pull up the standard tier 8 non-premium variant of the Tiger II, which is the Tiger II instead of the King Tiger. This will obviously become a meme as these tanks are both referring to the exact same thing and it's kind of funny that Wargaming decided to make a premium version of it. But of course it's been wanted by the community for a while as the Tiger II is a great and reliable machine. Um, whether premium or non-premium, that is no exception. So right off the bat, going down here, uh, their firepower stats are the same, and that is because they both use the same 105mm gun. And I will give you a little bit of info on this right after this, but just carrying on, we'll just move along from the gun or the subject for this later on. The non-premium Tiger II ends up taking a win at 10.4 seconds, beating out the 10.60 on the premium King Tiger. The inner clip reload, of course, does not apply to this tank, as well as the clip size, that those are what the NA stand for, not applicable. 5.77 uh, is the base rate of fire, beating out the 5.66 on the King Tiger. Now, because they're both using the exact same uh, gun, you will see that penetration damage, shell cost, shell velocity, and ammo capacity uh, does remain the same on both tanks uh, with 225 on the standard premium rounds or AP rounds what did I say standard premium rounds standard AP rounds 285 on the premium APCR or 60 on the HE with 320 uh, average damage on both the premium and non-premium round and 420 if you just uh, actually penetrate with the HE. This has a shell cost of 1,030 for AP, 4,800 for the premium APCR, 650 for the HE. With shell velocity on both tanks with the AP being 1,100 meters a second, 1,375 on the APCR and 1,100 meters a second on the HE. Very good for this 105 and I have to point out this is probably the best thing for the Tiger II to get a premium variant but not having it beat out its uh, tier 8 counterpart. There has to be a slight drawback at least in that respect. Both carry the 42 rounds but of course with the uh, better reload on the Tiger II you get 1846.4 just slightly edging out in DPM over the King Tiger. The aim time dispersion beat out the King Tiger again. The Tiger II has to remain, uh, and I, I kind of accept this because I, I feel it's more better that the premium variant does not beat out the non-premium version. 2.5 seconds is the aim time of the King Tiger. 0.34 dispersion at meters at 100 meters. Um, elevation is 15 degrees. Depression is 8 degrees. Hull Traverse is 26 degrees and Turret Traverse is 26. So I'm glad to see that the Tiger II still maintains a slight lead or edge over the Premium King Tiger here uh, in just 
most of the stats except the elevation and gun depression. Mobility stat, these tanks are identical because they both have the same engine and I'm just quickly glancing at that because I just noticed I messed up and the power to weight ratio on the uh, Tiger 2 is actually better at 12.8 and that is because its terrain resistance on soft is actually better or Yes, better than the uh, terrain resistance for the King Tiger with 2.4 to 2.3. And I'm not sure if that's the reason for that, but other than that, the mobility stat is actually the same. Survivability stat, the Tiger 2 actually takes a bump up on this one and finally gets a lead with 57 to the 51 on the Tiger 2. And that is because the hit points on this tank is a whopping 1,650. Very healthy for a tier 8 premium, and I believe this is almost as good as the Lerva that is the other tier 8 German premium tank. And I want to say that is 1,600, but I'm not too sure. I'll probably have to double check that later on. The Tiger 2, uh, fully upgraded, gets only 1,500 hit points. Unless I'm wrong, someone clearly will point this out. Overall armor thickness of this tank is from 25 to 8, 185 millimeters on the King Tiger, beating out the... Did I put this on the correct one? I believe... No, I didn't. This is actually supposed to be the same. I don't know why I didn't do that. Apologies for the correction in here. They are actually the same uh, besides the hit points. With the frontal uh, hull being 150, the sides and rear being 80 millimeters thick, and on the turret being 185 millimeters thick, and on the sides and rear of the turret being 80 millimeters thick respectively. And those both are equal on the same and I'm trying to remember why this is lower. Uh, I may have messed up on this, I'm not too sure. But the, the King Tiger stats are correct. I feel like I messed up on the, the Tiger 2, but uh, nevertheless, we'll carry on with it either way. The concealment stat on the King Tiger is of course going to be a little bit better. It's at 16, beating out the Tiger 2's 12, and that is because it has a unique... Um, I would say it's not a, I guess a unique skin over it. Uh, it does come with, with its own custom, uh, custom, I guess, skin. I don't want to say it's a skin because it doesn't look like it. And I did not check if you could actually apply any camos over it. But when stationary, it gets a 0 0.09. And when moving, it gets a 0 0.06. Uh, beating out the 0 0.08 and 0 0.04 on the Tiger 2. However, these might change if you decide to add in the camouflage from the customization screen. These might end up uh, switching back and forth. Again, the Tiger King Tiger comes with, I assume, one. I'm not 100% sure. I should have double checked that while I had the tank. The spotting stat for both tanks is 89, and that is because the Tiger 2 and King Tiger gain a 400 meter view range, really good for its tier, with the King Tiger having a smaller radio range of 620, while the Tiger 2 holds at 710 uh, meters of radio range, beating that out. The tank cost for this, for the Premium King Tiger, will give you 13,800 gold for the standard tank. No added bonuses, but as we all know, Wargaming never really sell a tank by itself till around the end of it. But you still don't get, you still get a uh, slight upcharge on it for the garage slot and the 100% crew that normally come along with these tanks. However, one of the things that will not matter is when you have a 60% silver bonus and a 15% experience bonus over the standard tier 8 Tiger 2, which do not have any bonuses. So this becomes a kind of a 
premium variant of the Tiger II, if you want to say. It beats it out only in the amount of hit points you have and in the concealment stat, but the premium bonuses is normally why you purchase these tanks. But other than that, the ter Tier 8 Tiger II still remains competitive as far as I can see. There's nothing as far as the gun goes um, that makes it overwhelmingly pay to win with the Tiger, well, with the King Tiger. The Tiger II is a great tank overall, and I'm glad they didn't outdo it with the premium version. And just a quick tidbit before we head on over to the uh, replay or gameplay I have of it. I just wanted to give you guys a little, I don't know why that popped up again, uh, a little kind of info on the 105mm gun that's actually on that. It is actually a concept. Ideas for rearming the Tiger II was brought up by the Krupp in some time in late 1944. The concept drawing Krupp made was for the Tiger II to be rearmed with the 105cm KWK L68 cannon. This design would require new mounting and new mechanical parts to be optimized for the larger 105cm gun. I don't know why I say 105, but it's 10.5cm. Either way, while the idea was indeed a very interesting one to the one to up the gun, the Tiger II, it was never implemented because of its drawbacks. The 10.5 gun uses a two-piece ammunition, which requires the presence of another loader. This is impossible because of the turret is already cramped as with three people inside, and the addition of another will make the interior a very miserable place to be in. Plus the fact the gun's ammunition is two-piece already means that the drawback behind this upgrade is a much slower rate of fire. This causes the concept to be rejected by the German High Command, and if it wasn't, it certainly ended with Germany's surrender in May 1945. No prototypes were made, and its existence is only proven by a concept drawing. Way to go Wargaming in stepping up and including a 105 on the Tiger II based on concepts. Just wanted to throw that one at you, but... So something I'm trying to start off with in all my tank reviews now is to actually include a 3D model of the tank in the video itself, rather than just watching it do its business on the battlefield. And I have to say that currently, between the captured King Tiger and the King Tiger, this tank aesthetically looks great. I like the little little uh, additions that they have on the King Tiger here compared to the captured one. The side skirts having those missing pieces, uh, but again, they're not really in the model, in the uh, armor model, so they don't count as spaced armor. Keep that in mind when you're side scraping, but the the attention to the little things that Wargaming's deciding to add on to these premium tanks is starting to become a little bit outstanding. I mean, even the chains, uh, they just they just stand out way too much. But not only do I want to point out the model of this tank, since you just got a heaping full of me rambling on about the armor on paper or in Excel, I figured I might as well show you what it what it's actually like in the 3D armor model viewer. Now keep in mind this is on the console version, so I cannot show you effective stats as most people would like that, like Tanks GG, but I can still give you some tips when side scraping. So keep in mind here that the tracks along the turret um, both on the front sides and here on the back are actually modeled in so they count as some spaced armor. Although I don't know why it's not sticking out from the tank. It is giving it an extra couple millimeters of armor there. However, just to point out, quick guide here to whether you're the person driving this tank or the one going against it. Quick tip here is to try to hide the sides of the Tiger. And this applies as well to the Captured King Tiger and the Tiger II, is that this right here, this little space, 
is your weak spot. When over angling, if someone aims right here, or they manage to go straight through the tracks and aim for that hitting alongside the hole, it will be a penetration. This right here is the major weak spot when someone is side scraping. If you have about 200, I would say about 250 millimeters of penetration on your gun, not even, I would say 200, anything over 200 millimeters will probably go right through the side here. Just keep in mind that it is a small gap when, when a tiger is side scraping, so you don't want to uh, mess up on it or have the tracks eat it, and that applies to both sides. So again, as I was pointing out when I was looking at the 3D model um, of the tank, is that those little skirts on the side are just there to basically obscure your vision and hide the major weak points of the Tiger. That it does not count as spaced armor, so when you shoot at it, it should go right through and into the tank. Now, it is saying that this is the same uh, thickness, armor thickness, but keep in mind that up here has um, a little bit better chance of ricocheting versus the smaller angle in this. I don't know why that is, I'm just going off of what, uh, what the angle, effective angle should be when you're aiming for the weak spot of this tank. However, if you decide to just load the premium on your tank, anything on the front with over 250 millimeters of penetration should clearly go through this turret as it is quite flat uh, on both this and the King the King Tiger and the Captured Tiger uh, both have this weak, as a weak point. It's flat enough that if someone just aims at it with over 250 millimeters of penetration, you'll go right through it causing damage. But rather than me telling you that, let's get over and head into some gameplay. But without further ado, let's get into the gameplay. I hope I pulled up the correct video because I have a few of this. Now, while these, while I did manage to get Ace Tankers in the King Tiger as well as the Captured King Tiger, they are, keep in mind, very, they were very new when I recorded these, so Ace Tankers for them was anything above 15 to 1600 experience as I believe this one is around 1600 and while I would love to be able to showcase a highly exceptional um, ace tanker for this game it was still new and that was the highest I got for the ace tanker for it. Quickly moving on and going over to the normal game here Oh, I didn't realize they actually included the bird sounds. I have my environmental sounds really low on the game, as well as the chat, because, you know, listening to people talk sometimes in that game is very toxic. Um, so I was actually surprised by the... I assume that's a seagull. Sounds like a seagull. However, we quickly notice here that the team is massively spreading to the northern side of the map, as they always do. I always try to sneak around and go to the southern end, and it paid off quickly for me as the Cheeto managed to get hit right there with a 333 uh, roll on that first shot. He doesn't live very long as this this tank is actually using one of my better German commanders. I believe this is one is the best commander I have for it, um, and highest. And I'm quickly putting this tank to work and brawling against two heavies and a medium. The T-29, the Carnarvon, and the T-44. I want to say that's the T-44. I don't remember. don't remember from the name. Yep, T-44. Good to know. I didn't mess up. So, right away you see them trying to get the lower plate. And something to mention again, as I will point out, Side scraping works only so well unless you over angle, and in this case, whether it was sheer luck, as long as you angle, you're fine until they track. And the T29 is the one actually putting over the work at tier 7, 
tank is still amazing. Too bad I don't have it anymore. Putting out the Carnarvon. Up to two kills already. Got to go against them. IS-3 misses a shot. And another shot over into the 229. 346. That's a, that's a really good roll on that one. So the KV-85 decides to roll over. Quickly put a shot in him. And you will notice that that reload is still really good on that. The Leo is going to push over. It gets tracked. A little bit of problems with the elevation, but get it around. The T-44 thought his buddies were going to actually rush out with him, but hesitated to, and he got punished for it. 340 is actually the highest roll I've seen so far in this replay. And the IS-3 taking advantage of me actually poorly angling the tank. And coming around, putting that 122 right into the side of mine. Now, I will point out that, or apologize for the next shot you're about to see me take, as trying to gamble between turning around and taking a shot at the Motherland and trying to avoid an IS-3 shot kind of caused that to happen. Just, just wanted to point that one out. But, because of that, took out my commander, the IS-3 is definitely aiming for me. And again... Panicking in the moment. Got to bring back that commander. The IS-3 really wants me. But putting in some shots back in. And you can see that the reload on this with a very exceptional crew is really good. Uh, six, no that was 9.75 over that, what was it, the base reload was 10.6. 10.60 seconds is really good in this. Oh, actually, it's 8.75. Wow, never mind. It was it's really exceptional. One thing to take into consideration is the higher commander is, the better the tank can perform. And I just recently learned that myself, even though I've been playing this. And in that matter of, what, four minutes? Four and a half minutes, we managed to claim victory with four kills, 15 pens. Quickly racking up silver. 4,180 damage, 1,950, a steel wall, an ace tanker, and a high caliber. Now, while the 1.25 actually does add on the silver, we will be scrolling over to the next page, and you can clearly see what the base amount that of silver that I made from the game, which was 110,847 before any of the multiplier. So it is still a profitable tank, and I'm just going to pause this before it keeps moving forward, with a 1,776 base uh, experience for the King Tiger. Of course, the premium stuff always adds in, giving me 2,930. I do run premium accounts. That is probably helpful when you grind out crew. But 15 pens gives me 4,180 damage, 464 assisted damage, with 1,950, 9 of those 12 shots were blocked, and damage received was 1,035. But 7 enemies damaged, and 4 of those were ones that were directly in front of me and killed me. I didn't get the finishing shot on the T-29 as I hoped, but we still managed to do a lot of work on that corner. And this is quite, what is this, 500 or 450 above anybody else on the team with that massive jump to 2000 almost doubling the next guy in damage shows that if you put the king tiger in the hands of a capable player this tank can do amazing work and my crew on this is a rank 9 with the standard brothers in arms snapshot um what else uh smooth ride the most of the basic skills that you would normally start out with are in perks being that it's rank 9 it doesn't help you improve on the uh, extra bit minor stats that it is so from a 10.60 base reload goes down to 8.75 that's to show you what a capable commander on this tank will actually do continuing on I'll let the I believe I scrolled through this as a little bit more. When I play games nowadays, I tend to stick to the screen when it's an ace tanker because I'm recording. I stick to the screen a little bit longer 
just so that I can talk about the stats when I do these types of reviews. Sorry. So the efficiency, the Cheeto was 351, took two shots, 899 to the T44, 746 to the Carnarvon, 253 to the KV85, 696 to the IS-3, to the Leo was 278, and the T29, did that pop up? No, it didn't. T29 was 957 with three shots. So... All in all, a good game for this tank, and just letting you guys know, this is probably something you're going to want to get into or purchase if you enjoy this this tank replay, or if you have one that beats that out, feel free to submit it. If you did enjoy the video, please drop a like, I'd greatly appreciate it, and of course, I don't know why I keep forgetting about those popping up in-game, uh, but if you do, feel free to like, dislike. Comment on what your favorite part of that is, uh, or if you have a replay that you'd like to submit showing a better ace tanker of that tank, just head on over to the detail side of the channel and submit one to that email, and I will probably, uh, more than likely, feature it if you are so inclined to uh, watch the replay. Thank you guys, that's it for me, and I'll catch you next time.